This is Cybert signing into Tiberium Essence, the mod for Tiberium Wars. For a 2v2v2 on the map Marauders. In the north plane as the orange nod, this is Flex Big Cavs. Uh, and this is one of those maps with freaky shadows. Uh, his teammate as the red plane as not also. This is Flex Big Burtons. Big Burtons and Big Cavs. Uh, you guys can't see it, but in the observer's chair for this particular match is actually Flex Big Arms, who's the guy who sent this replay to me as the Cyan GDI. This is Goblin. And their teammate as the Blue Nod, this is Firestar. Yes, his buildings do look purple, but his color in game is blue because playing as the pink GDI, this is Legend. Rounding out our last team, Legend, and his teammate as the yellow GDI, this is Commander. I think it's Commander 117 or something, but we have got a bunch of stuff to go over. This is Tib Essence, the 1.6 beta. This is uh, sort of what was, I guess, considered maybe like the most competitively minded version of the map or of the mod. So this one is the one that is used for multiplayer. Uh, and it looks like, wow, Goblin able to control one of these uh, little sensor towers, I think, with just beacons. Uh, I guess that's what they were referring to in the email. So. This is a mod. You can download it from a link in the description already. Falcons getting off to a little bit of an assault. Goblin bringing a bit of GDI pain to the Nod team in the north. Flex Big Burtons is going to have to get his units under control or he is going to lose this refinery. Oh my gosh, is he actually going to lose this refinery? One Falcon has been retreated, but the refinery goes down. A great hit and run here. And actually, he's going to escape with everything. All of the Falcons reverse move away and they escape. Scorpion Tank does show up as well. Uh, I think a bit remin reminiscent of a Tick Tank. And a Goliath APC trying to snipe that Engineer, but Blue Firestar does grab that Tib Spike back away from uh, Legend. And what a start to this match where we actually have a bunch of stuff to discuss because this map has a bunch of custom feature sets that you don't see. One of them is the Viceroids here guarding this blue Tiberium. If you try and just harvest the blue, the Viceroids will attack you and will kill your harvesters as they try and get that blue Tiberium. Another Falcon attack coming in here as Legend sneaks up on the harvesters of Firestar. He says, you're going to take that Tib Spike away from me. I am going to kill your harvesters. A couple of the harvesters taking a bit of damage here, and it looks like eventually the Falcons will be pushed back a Scarab here as well as the attack bikes, but actually this is enough Falcons that they may be able to just kill off a couple of Harvesters before they really get pushed away. Sting turrets are here. They're not laser turrets. They are stings as two of the Falcons get eliminated and Team GDI Nard Dark Alliance is uh, maybe going to get manhandled by both of the other solo teams. There is a Nod team, a GDI team, and then a GDI and Nod team. No screen team, just a half and half team. A couple of Wolverines are getting overpowered here. A couple of rocket troopers coming in here from the big flexing team as they push back attacks from the GDI team. And GDI mounting their own assault. A 2v2v2 where everyone has a front to fight on. Goblin starting to push back big Burtons. And, uh, well, Legend is bringing the attack back after being getting after getting pushed back a little bit by Firestar. Firestar with a couple of Mastodon tanks. Not Mammoth tanks, but Mastodon tanks. As a couple of rockets going to be coming in here. Flame tank was attempted, but it did not work out there as Legend is just going to overwhelm these Mastodons with pure Falcon firepower. And, well, I guess that is what happens when you try to go for just a couple of big heavy tech units in the face of mass Falcons. The mass Falcons just overwhelm them. A couple of uh, Wolverines going to get taken down by the Scorpion tanks. 
And it seems like faster, lighter attack units in mass is a completely strong strategy. Not air tower coming up here from Firestar, but I don't know if it'll actually be enough to save his MCV. Mastodon tank coming in from the back to help clean up these Falcons, and the MCV will barely be saved there. Legend spending the entirety of his ground army to commence that attack, but it did not kill the MCV. Meanwhile, Big Burton's coming in here with a ton of not tick tanks, but scorpion tanks ready to burrow into the ground, it looks like. But uh, they don't actually burrow. They just go for the hit and run, taking down a couple of harvesters, but not taking down the refinery as the attacks are not stopping. The Tempest MLRS, that uh, mobile launching rocket system or something, does a bit of damage to the blue Firestar Nod player. But eventually, Legend does back up, and the attacks are just not stopping. There are some interesting uh, points of interest in the middle of the map, some interesting features of the map in the middle of the map that we just have not had an opportunity to talk about. But as this GDI attack commences against the Mastodon tanks, which I'm not actually sure why Nod has Mastodon tanks, but they do in this particular case. They look like a GDI unit in design style. Disruptor tanks here for Commander 117, and he is blasting his way through Flex Big Cav's base. And actually, uh, Flex Big Cav's may be getting knocked out of this game. If he loses his MCV, he may be losing everything else as well. Goblin striking back as Big Burton turns his entire army around to fight for Big Cav's and try and shut down these disruptor tanks. The, the tech lab does get targeted there. The MCV has survived for now, and a couple of laser scorpions now in the mix to try and push back this GDI army. Commander 117 is not going to have an easy victory against the Nod Brethren in the north as disruptor tanks get overwhelmed by infantry and scorpions. Meanwhile, Goblin still fighting his battle to secure his homeland. And it looks like he has eventually pushed back the Nod forces as Legend mounts another attack, the third major assault against Firestar. This time a mix of Disruptors, Infantry, and Tempest as he's trying to break the Nod foothold, but he just is unable to. Attacking a couple of power plants, taking the Infantry, or taking the power offline as the Shredder turrets and the Sting turrets try and defend against this attack. Once again, the MLRS trying to target down these tanks and overwhelm them. Couple of scorpions, couple of attack helicopters also here in the mix. Harpies as they get targeted down by the rockets of the GDI and the infantry just get absolutely wasted by the attacking GDI forces. The war factory is under threat and uh, some kind of a transport coming in, dropping mines on the MLRS, able to lock down two of them, almost completely destroy them, but I guess as long as they don't move, they will actually be fine here. A stop command gets issued, but no, trying to clear the mines just destroys three of the MLRSs, and eventually the Nod MCV will get targeted. Shockwave artillery comes down from on high, and uh, a little bit of an ion cannon, a little bit of a shockwave artillery strike Firing on that refinery. It looks like Firestar is out of this game. His refineries are down. His MCV has been eliminated. He's got a mutant garage, one of the many features of this map. So he does still have a little bit of economy. He does still have a crane. He does still have some production. But his entire main base is just getting leveled. Meanwhile, Commander has re-upped his attack. He has got zone troopers mixed in with more disruptor tanks, and he is here to claim a Nod MCV if he at all can. Ion Cannon Control is now online from Goblin. And it's gonna be Zone Troopers jump jetting in towards the MCV as it crumbles to dust. And the Nod infantry just get annihilated by these disruptor tanks. Zone Troopers dealing with the harvesters as the front line expands for our double GDI team, taking out dual Nod players in concert with each other. A Sonic Emitter comes online just in time to get leveled. 
and the unholy alliance of GDI and Nod is now going to be mixing in Mutant Garage as well. Tib Silo comes in for the block. Goblin may have a super weapon on his side, but if he can't survive this attack from Legend, he is not going to get an opportunity to use that Ion Cannon. Cobra Artillery firing off shots against the Disruptors and pushing back Commander 117 once and for all, or just for another moment. As Shockwave Artillery drops from the sky, locking down a couple of Tempest and a couple of Disruptor tanks as well. Jump jetting Zone Troopers come to the front line and they are going to push away this GDI Armada. It looks like Big Cavs has been able to survive. He has a couple of, oh, he's got a mutant garage as well. All right, now that we've got, I think, a moment to talk, big thanks to folks who support the channel on Patreon, all-time supporters like Oz Media, Media Storm, Deadly Shadow, Anoxic, Spud, and Admiral Akbar 47. These are planetary assault carriers. They are flying Viceroids, and they do clean up that harvester from Firestar as he tries to sneak away some of that Tiberium in the middle of the map. There is also a uh, big thanks to some other supporters from Patreon, like Fronsky, Schnoffinoff, and uh, Orbital Bombardment comes in once again, EMP, Harvesters, and Refinery, and a Crane from Firestar, but everything survives the bombardment as Firestar desperately trying to keep control of this game or keep himself in this game in any way. And uh, the Mammoth Tank is there. Uh, Legend might be able to snipe this. No, he doesn't. He calls in the Zone Raiders, but they do get cleaned up. There is actually also a Veteran Seacrank. But uh, by, by the way, big thanks to Fonsky, Schneffenhoff, Chris T, Whimsiest, Falcon Tomcat, Lieutenant Victor, and Kuro as well. Supporters over on Patreon. Big thanks to them. Flex Big Arms is the guy who sent in this replay from uh, Tib Essence, and he also sent a couple of notes to go along with it. One of them is the fact that there are mutant vehicle garages, which, oh, okay, that's where the Mastodon tanks are coming from, I guess. I didn't realize why they looked so freaky deaky, but it is because they are mutant vehicles and so that's why their design style does not fit in with Nod. There's three mutant vehicles, uh, vehicle garages, and now we do have a Mammoth Walker Mark II coming in here from Commander 117. He's got a couple of Zone Troopers as well. There are also these mobile sensor arrays as a feature of the map. They're kind of like observation posts or Zelnado Go Watchtowers. They do reveal parts of the map, and they also do reveal stealth. So it is quite nice to have them. Apparently, there's a bug where you can ping the map to be able to ex to be able to capture them. And uh, Mammoth Marker Walker does get captured here, and EMP'd rather, not actually captured. As Shockwave Artillery is about to fire off somewhere else on the map, on top of the infantry, as Commander 117 desperately trying to save his Mammoth Walker, and the Cyborg Commando is going to make a run. He looks so funny walking away from the front line, taking those little baby steps at 100 miles an hour, and the Mammoth Walker gets taken down. Big Burton and Big Cavs joining together to take down that Mammoth Walker. In the middle of the map is a Vein Hole, which gives four times the Tib value. So it is guarded by these Planetary Assault Carriers, aka these Flying Viceroids or Viceroids, but it does apparently give like double blue Tiberium apparently. So I guess all of this Tiberium is actually 4x value which is pretty darn cool that there is such a thing, but uh, obviously not something you want in every map, but it is something that you want in some maps. EMP locks down that mammoth tank as the MLRS and the Firehawk joining forces to try and shut down Goblin, but Goblin, with his own air superiority, brings the pain to Legend and gets his mammoth tank out of that situation. The battle rages on in the middle of the map as someone tries to take over this. And, uh, okay, these guys glitched out. It looks like they're just frozen there. They're no longer defending the Green Tiberium in the middle of the map. And uh, it looks like nothing is actually defending it because these are stealth harvesters, so they don't know that they are there. That definitely gives Nod a bit of an advantage there with the stealth abilities. 
One minute, 25 seconds left on the counter for that Ion Cannon. Sniper Team slowly crawling his way forward. And if Nod can just steal this 4x Tiberian, then that is going to give Firestar a huge advantage as he claims all of that cash. He did rebuild his MCV. He got himself back online. He's got the crane. He's got the MCV. He is pretty well set up as these Firehawks come in and just blast away more of the air units of Legend. Eventually, the Mammoth Tank does go down. This Harvester is going to get taken out as well. Harvester getting targeted down. Bonk, there it goes. As Commander starts up another assault, it looked like the GDI team was going to be able to just take over the map but they have been severely beaten back, and I think as they started to run out of cash, they were unable to keep up their assaults. Throwing units at their opponent just has not quite worked out. Orca Strike comes in, does some damage to the Tibbs bike, but not enough to actually take it down. And the Blue Tiberium, or the Blue Harvester stealing Tiberium from the middle of the map is, I think, keeping Firestar in this game. Goblin and Firestar, they've got quite a tight packed base, but in the middle of the map there. Catalyst missile hits the orbital deployment center, but doesn't quite take it down. The repair tool doesn't come in, so the residual damage will eliminate it. Doing a bit of damage to the tech center as well. A bit unfortunate there for Legend, but he will be able to snipe down a couple of goblins, Zocom units, or zone troopers rather. Ion Cannon is ready to go. Firestar looking for the Stealth Tank Scout, and he is going to be able to reveal a bit of Legend's base. Scan, I think, also firing off there. Another Mammoth Walker almost getting taken down in the north. I'm so ready for this Ion Cannon to go off, but I'm not sure where it's actually going to be striking. Commando comes into the base of Commander 117, and he's going to be able to clean up some of these buildings. Gets a War Factory as well. These Juggernauts are just having no easy time taking down this Commando. Commander was completely unprepared for this as this Black Hand Commando goes back into stealth mode and will just pivot to start taking down these power plants. Mass sell-off from Commander 117 and also an Ion Strike coming in to try and eliminate that Commando. That Commando got almost as much enforced sell-offs as it did in actual kills. Commander 117's base is gutted. Firestar just does fire off a little bit of a beacon in the middle of the map, calling attention to all of the GDI harvesters, which are non-sneakily trying to call, trying to claim that Tiberium. Air tower does get destroyed as that airfield gets eliminated by Nod bombers. And it looks like it's all coming down to Firehawks and Artillery. This support battle base being a big help. Some of the Viceroids finally going down. The planetary assault carriers will eventually wander into dangerous territory and get eliminated. Again, they're sort of neutral units there in the middle of the map defending that vein hole. And, uh, well, eventually that MLRS does also go down. Big Burton's artillery going to be able to claim that Tib spike. Shockwave artillery fires down upon him, but the RNG isn't good enough to hit them as they're retreating. And that is a complete waste of a shockwave. Unfortunately, misses its mark. A stalemate is emerging as these guys have drawn lines in the sand and are unable to dislodge each other. Another Mammoth Mark Walker does come forward. Not airships coming forward, but they just get completely eliminated. Harvesters perhaps not doing a whole lot as a couple of zone troopers will get targeted down. 
these raider buggies with their charged particle beam upgrade trying to target down those zone troopers and these zone trooper hit squads it's a nice idea from goblin but it is just going nowhere and it looks like we are in full stalemate mode the kodiak comes out some of the big late game walker units are here as well that cyborg commando just getting basically an insta kill on those two mlrs's and actually this cyborg commando is maybe completely unopposed here a vulcan tower does get dropped in response legend is going to try and break this commando's attack with the help of these stealth tanks though that commando might be able to get away scot free just taking a little bit of hole damage and we'll be able to press on from there Banshees from Nod. The Nod response to, I guess, Hammerheads, kind of? They're a bit Storm Rider-y in their design and their flight patterns. Everyone was sort of holed up on, like, two Tiberium fields, and then the Nod harvesters are able to safely gather from the middle of the map. And, uh of veteran sea crates a little bit unclaimed for a few moments there and a mystery crate over there i don't know if this is a situation where like the mystery crate could be a bomb so it might just blow you up or if it's uh only good things from these crates you just don't know what it is stealth tanks coming in able to snipe a couple of harvesters goblin going to be losing some of his harvesters on the edges there And no one's going to grab the mystery crate. They're just going to let it sit there. Unclaimed. Firestar moves back out with his cyborg commando. He's going to try and take on a mammoth mark or a mammoth tank and a couple of MLRSs at the same time as some sniper teams, which honestly, the sniper teams really do not do very much damage to the cyborg commando. Uh, gets himself a mammoth tank and he's just gonna be out of there Actually, he might be able to clean up the sniper teams as well. This cyborg commando is super strong Dang That cyborg commando really finding a bit of damage a, a battery gonna push the harpies away from nod and These guys are so spread out and so split up that who knows where any of this is going jetpack trooper that really does, I mean, Tib Essence, if you didn't know, is sort of like uh, Tib Sun, but the next move. And so it's one part Tiberium Wars, one part Tiberian Sun. And that's why you have stuff like Jetpack Troopers from GDI, which is pretty sick to see. Uh, Harpy's going to town against Jetpack Troopers, and it looks like the Jetpack Troopers might be able to win as the Harpies change target to the Harvester for a couple of moments there. And I guess if your opponent isn't shooting you, then that's one way that you can win a fight. Juggernaut's leading the way for this Mammoth Walker to finally encroach on Big Cav's base. His tech lab getting targeted down. And, uh, well, it may be a big pyramid, but it is about to fall. Song, strongest shape in the world. Who cares? Another orbital strike comes down. Black Hand Squad's coming forward, and this GDI army may have run out of steam before it ever really got going. Cyborg Commando steps forward, trying to defend this whole GDI base by himself as the stealth tanks come forward to clear out the infantry that have pressed a little bit too deeply into this Nod base. The only, only the walker has survived, but it is surrounded and it will go down. Disruption tanks trying to come in. They actually might be able to save it. No, the stealth tanks on the exit do get the kill. And the, whatever these GDI support walker or support units are coming in to transport stuff. And they are just not going to get very far. Orcas all loaded up with their guns as they clear out these zone troopers and get cleared out themselves. The EMP locks down the remaining de Tempest and Disruptors as our double nod team clears them out. Harvesters in the middle of the map trying to take what little Tiberium remains. 
in the middle. Every team has strong control of one corner of the map or of one section of the map. Ion Cannon is ready to go for the second blast. And an Orca Bomber there to try and clear out that Tib Spike. Legend trying to shut down some of Goblin's Harvesters. EMP Control Center as uh, Goblin hasn't actually captured it with his Engineer Firestar is like, Hey man, grab that EMP Control Center. Maybe we can make use of it. Try and break one of the deadlocks in this game. Stealth Tanks pressing forward. Big Cavs is going to close in on the War Factory of Commander. Able to jump on these Tempest right as they emerge. And Stealth Tanks, they are good in every version of, T of Command and Conquer, apparently. They're good in Kane's Wrath, good in Tib Wars, good here in Tib Essence. And, uh, well, I guess they're not super great in Renegade, but, you know, they're fun in Renegade, so you've got that much going for you. And I don't, you know, they're okay, I guess, in uh, Tib Essence and uh, Tib, uh, Tib Dawn and <laughs> Tib Sun. I don't actually remember them in Tib Sun, but mostly I think I played Nod, making use of those subterranean vehicles. Commander 117, he's got the big flashy army. He's got the cool looks, but Stealth Tanks in the back of your base is still just something that every GDI player has to deal with. And in this case, Stealth Tank's taking down most of the Orcas, Sniper Teams as well, coming in to try and reveal those units. I assume Stealth is still revealed by infantry when they're up close and personal, just like in Tib Wars. RPG Tower comes back online. Commander 117 has been beaten back, but is not defeated just yet. Goblin still has not launched the second Ion Cannon just yet. Although if he could see into some of these Nod bases, he might see a pretty tightly packed, juicy target to unleash his Ion Cannon upon. Harvesters have their little guns on top to try and deal with these Zone Troopers, and they're actually trading okay versus the Zone Troopers. Both of the Harvesters, it looks like, are going to be able to escape that situation. The Stealth Tank's not done just yet, but they are eventually going to get cleaned up by just sheer over fire, overwhelming firepower from GDI. Stealth Tank's going to target down, I think, Commandos or Sniper Teams sneaking in there. Vertigo Bombers making their way forward or making their way back from uh, Firestar. All right, the Nod Assault is beginning. Raider Buggies and Banshees, and it might just be cheap units that are able to overwhelm the GDI, but no, he decides to turn around. Uh, I don't know why he drove all that way if he was not going to actually attack. He, uh, he fires a couple of shots and then he's like, oh, no, never mind. I don't want to fight this. It's back to like cheap, low tech units for uh, most of these players. There's a mix of big, late game, fully upgraded kind of stuff mixed with just swarms of. swarms of cheap, low tier units. Ion Cannon is unable to be a game-ending door breaker for these teams. Sometimes super weapons can be something that helps break up the stalemate and break open the front door. I do like the, uh, the Orca Rig unfurling into the support battle base right in the middle of the map. And <laughs> just like descending upon everyone's harvesters. EMP fires off, and, uh, well, I don't know how much that really EMP'd up the GDI player, but I think that was sort of just a lockdown of the uh, of your own Raider buggies. I guess eventually the GDI does sort of get pushed back, probably the Cyborg Commando doing more of that almost than anything. Harpies are here, pushing back that GDI force, and once again, the Cyborg Commando just hilariously wiping the floor 
with just about everything. Legend showing up. It's time to double team. Just, uh, well, never mind, because there's infinite harpies here to push back those GDI forces. And there is way too much here. The EMP fires off and it catches a big chunk of the harpies. Big calves and big Burtons trying to hold off the GDI team with just air forces. Well, let's see if they can actually defeat the uh, Cyborg Commando, because if they can't defeat the Cyborg Commando, they may not be able to actually step forward. The attacks have ceased sort of from east to west, and this has turned into a north versus south. The double nod team is the team to kill, apparently, as these guys are kind of holding their own against essentially four opponents. Uh, the teams in the south have basically stopped attacking each other, and they're just attacking the Nod team. Commando retreats from the front line. More transports coming in. I guess this is the equivalent of Bloodhounds coming in. GDI forces getting overwhelmed. Couple of Wolverines, couple of Falcons mixed in here as Legend tries to keep up the assault with Commander 17. Blue Tiberium has actually regrown a pretty significant amount in the corner of the map. And also a random crate here. Not sure if that's like a money crate or if that's just anything goes kind of a crate. A couple more Banshees swing through. They're going to be able to claim a War Factory. And hey, thousand bucks there for one of the Nod players. Support Battle Base does survive the Orca Assault, but the Harvester does not. And I'm not sure if this is a factor of the fact of the case that these guys are all so evenly matched, or it just feels like uh, games are difficult to end in Tib Essence, which can happen. Sometimes it's a case of these players are just sort of all on the same level. And, uh, well, we'll see if these Cobras can get scared away. Six minutes on the nuke, but only two minutes on the Ion Cannon as these Mammoths make their way forward. The Kodiak is going to be able to blast through some of these. Why are you turning around? I guess he decides, I don't want to attack. I don't know why he moved out in the first place. Support Battle Base, trying to keep the Green Tiberium in the middle for the team on the right. Cyborg Commando claims another life. Random Pitbull makes its way to the Mutant Garage and starts going on the attack. Once again, Raider Buggies pr pressing their way forward. One minute, 10, EMP fires off in mass. Some of the Falcons able to avoid the blast and they escape up to the north. Banshees swinging through and of course, infantry unaffected by the EMP. The Raider Buggies really just locking themselves down with that EMP and now trying to clear out the infantry as uh, black hand squads emerge from the ground. Those Nod subterranean vehicles coming into effect here. Another EMP is going to fire off. It catches a couple of these, uh, a couple of these stealth tanks, but they actually do activate, I believe, the master computer countermeasures, the EMP, yeah, the EMP nullifier there. 20 seconds left, and is Goblin going to be able to break through the Nod defenses that he has been unable to crack this whole game? Banshees decide to stop chasing those Orcas, and they will go for the GDI infrastructure here as Commander's front line gets broken almost entirely by Nod air units. Orcas coming in, the Harpies gonna go to town against the Orcas, and once again, the Ion Cannon is ready to fire. Harpies will give chase. Stealth tanks are going to catch a harvester, catch a mammoth tank, and the harvester actually escapes just barely. Takes away a chunk of the Nod base. It 
It looks like Commander has been completely broken. Seems like he's pretty low on cash. Most of his production has been eliminated. He does still have at least an MCV in some economy. Tip Chemical Plant gets cleaned up. That Catalyst Missile does have quite a cloud that lasts for a little while afterwards. And the stealth of the Nod team is really coming in handy as it does in basically all matches. Another GDI Commando or Sniper Team does get cleaned up there. Ion Cannon goes down. Three minutes left on the nuke. More Cobra artillery, but unable to really find a good angle to engage, it seems. Stealth tanks come forward, able to clean up a chunk of those harpies. Commander trying desperately to rebuild is going to lose his barracks, which he has held on to for so long. His conyard is still there, and he does still have harvesters gathering some amount of Tiberium for him. It looks like Legend is going to have to come in to save Commander. A tale as old as time. Big Caps comes in for the assault, but gets cleaned up by Legend. EMP locks down another Mammoth as the Cobra Artillery are going to be able to clean it up. A nice strike there to clean up that Mammoth. The Kodiak taking a bit of damage from the heroic stealth tanks, but can this Nod frontline be broken or will it just turn into another stalemate as stealth tanks and Cobras retreat away from each other to their respective sides? Raider Buggy's coming in for the scout, actually going to be able to EMP the MCV. Not that it really matters because it seems like Legend has enough stuff to defend his ally. Ah, Mobile Sensor Array actually got backed up from the very edge of the, of the cliff there. Looted Pitbull, another mutant unit coming into play here as uh, takes down the Tib Spike. Vertigo Bombers making a run for the nuke, and they are going to get through. This should be enough Vertigo Bombers to bring it down. Let's see. I assume. There they go. The sell-off does happen. The EMP misses as the nuke will not fire off. The Vertigo Bombers from Firestar manage to make their way home. Commando comes in and gets the MCV. The crane is still there, though. And this Commando is getting targeted down, and she will be eliminated. The APC gets the kill there. Ion Control comes back online. Goblin going to try again for another Ion Cannon, which, again, hasn't really done too much over the course of this game. Mutant Garages, cool idea. Uh, I'm not sure what they're really doing in terms of different units, but it gets you uh, pit bulls and it gets you Humvees, so I guess that's cool. Free repairs there. Decent amount of Tiberium has regrown. Big Burton starting to press forward with his artillery army once again, but Firestar is going to press him back with just like pure stealth tank, it seems. He's a big believer in the stealth tank. Mammoth goes in for the attack. The Kodiak as well trying to chase down some of these Nod retreating units, but no one will commit to an attack. And so the stalemate continues. The Kodiak gets brought down as he ventures a little bit too far into Big Burton's territory. Cyborg Reaper pressing forward. A Montauk is here, one of the Nod late game powerhouse units as it looks like the defender's advantage from Big Burton's 
is going to bring the pain. Catalyst Missile and an EMP on top of the Obelisk, clearing out the ground forces. And can Firestar do it? Can he finally break the front line? With five minutes to go on that Ion Cannon, this is a perfect opportunity to bring the power crumbling down for this Nod player. Mind drop on top of the army or just behind it as the Cyborg Commando from Firestar is here to try and clean up those mines. Harpies dive in to get the Cyborg Commando. Barely, he's kept alive by the Firehawks of Goblin. Orbital Bombardment comes in, that Shockwave Artillery locking down that Nod, Hand of Nod. And Firestar may have overstayed his welcome as the reinforcements coming in from the Flex team. Are they going to be able to stop the bleeding? Are they going to be able to stop the assault stealth tanks to save Big Burton against the stealth tanks of Firestar as an EMP fires off, locking down some of these defensive structures and Big Burton's War Factory may fall, but the attack is petering out. A support base going to be coming in here as the Orca lands to give a little bit extra strength to this attack. And it looks like Firestar may have gained a bit of a foothold to try and hold this off. And at the same time, Commander 117 and Legend joining forces to press forward in the West. It's an unholy alliance in a 2v2v2, but it looks like we may have the first move coming out from the team in the north to leave the game. They are getting fully dislodged here on both fronts. And, and Obelisk comes in from Big Burton. He is not going down without a fight, but it looks like the west flank has fallen. And it looks like one non player is going to be pretty much out of this game. Big Cavs has almost nothing left in terms of infrastructure. He does still have the Mutant Garage, and he does have a massive amount of infantry from the sell-off. But Big Burton is going to be fighting a 1v2v2. And now he's got another support rig getting set up on top of his harvester, on top of his refinery there. The double GDI team continuing to press forward. A couple of Vertigos from Firestar getting cleaned up as he keeps tabs on this advancing GDI front line. This Nod team getting double teamed. Big Cavs and Big Burtons getting knocked out of this game. But at least it does mean there is a little bit of progress being made. And it may have taken Commander 117 Leg Legend, Goblin, and Firestar all in concert to knock this double Nod team out of this game. But at least we have made some progress. Flex Big Cavs has been defeated, leaving Big Burton as the only one from Team North left in this game. Ion Cannon with two minutes, with less than two minutes on the clock. This Nod team is going to sort of draw things out. Another mine drop on top of the army, cleans up a big chunk of it. The infantry walking right through it. Big Burton, I think, has been completely disrupted here. He does call in some Cyborg Squad support powers to try and disrupt this attack, but it is not enough. There's the fire sale trying to activate some of these high-tech sell-offs to get some units on the ground. And actually, Legend is going to now turn against Goblin and Firestar trying to invade up the ramp from the low ground. It's not quite going to work out as the stealth generator gets cleaned up. The Hand of Nod is here. The MCV is not far away. And one minute on the clock from Goblin. Fire sale is completed here as Big Burton will drop out of the game. He's only got a couple of power plants left. Legend turns around to seal the deal. Flex Big Burton leaves the game. It is now Legend and Commander versus Goblin and Firestar. Almost 30 seconds on the clock for that Ion Cannon. And who knows, they may use it to just delete this army. EMP fires off. It actually really only catches one Falcon. And this Montauk 
is going to get caught by mass mutant vehicles. The Montauk goes down, the Mammoth Walker watches from a distance. And only uh, five seconds left as artillery shell from somewhere on the map. <laughs> I'm not actually sure where those shots are coming in from. Ion Cannon is ready to fire off. GDI armies split up and they head into the darkness as they are hoping the fog of war will save them from that ion cannon. The shots coming from this juggernaut as he uh, launches a barrage to the other side of the map. War Factory getting targeted down. Legend is going to lose that. Not that it's doing a whole lot for him, but hey, Something else eliminated. A couple of power plants going down there as those Vertigo Bombers come in for a big pass. Firehawks seeking targets or just scouting to see where the Ion Cannon can blast. The GDI base of Commander gets deleted. He's still got his MCV and his Surveyor as well, but a big chunk of his base disappears in the blue flash of light. Mutants versus a support rig. Sonic Emitter cleans up those units as they try and come up the ramp. Sonic Emitter is just keeping these mutants uni mutant units at bay. And I guess this might trigger an all-in. I guess it's not quite all-in. Still producing a bit of infantry. A couple of Wolverines. Mass, ma mass infantry coming in here as uh, riflemen and missile squads coming together from Commander 117 through the middle of the map. He might get eaten up by these choke points, which are defended by Goblin Sonic Emitters. A couple of uh, Mastodon tanks driving through those mine drops. Avatars on the front line. Vertigo Bombers cleaning up at least one of those mutant garages, trying to eliminate the mutant vehicles. So it looks like Firestar is the only one with a mutant garage still under his control. All other mutant vehicles will no longer be produced. All right, let's see if Commander can do it. Commander 117 and Legend have been... Uh, on the offensive for most of the game, but they just have not been able to clear out their enemies without a little bit of help from the other side of the map. And now the two teams in the southern half of the map are turning against each other. And let's see who is able to bring the, bring the victory. Cattle's missile fires off on this entire army, leveling all of the infantry units and spawning a hundred Viceroids for these Wolverines to clean up. The Falcon's also here, and it looks like it's going to be a little bit of an army left over, but not nearly enough to break the GDI Nod Alliance of Firestar and Goblin. Although fully heroic Wolverine is pretty cool to see. They are wasting most of their shots on this Tib silo. Mammoth tanks coming forward and everything else just gets flattened. The defensive move is, most of the time, the one that wins the game here as Commander has been defeated. And I'm gonna guess that Legend isn't going to be far behind. Orcas get cleared out. There is not much on the ground to oppose this Mammoth Walker, although there are a couple of Mastodon tanks, and he's still, at least one Orca has survived that volley. The air tower did get destroyed, and it is this Mammoth Walker or these Mastodon tanks. Not much is left for Legend. Shockwave artillery going to fire off. It will try and catch these reinforcements as they spawn in, but the barracks has already been eliminated. The Mammoth Walker does survive the fight. Goblin and Firestar should be able to lock this up. There's the fire sail signaling the end of this match. We got to see some pretty cool units if you want to catch some other uh, tip essence action, 
I have some other videos on Tib Essence. And, uh, well, we got to see some cool stuff. And we got to see a very long, drawn-out match here in Tib Essence. Thank you all very much for watching. There we go. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, this is Cybert signing out.